kind of look at the um, some of the stigmas or or worries. I talked to a lot of people on the phone about serving the cannabis niche, and um, there's many many worries that people have about jumping into this niche as accountants that they rightfully should. And so I'm going to cover a few points here on this topic. Then at the end, um, we're also going to put in our um, our cannabis accounting guide so you can download that as well um, so f first and foremost um, depending on what your certification may or may not be so maybe you're a bookkeeper maybe you're an accountant maybe you're a CPA maybe you're an enrolled agent maybe you're a CFO or an MBA depending on that you always will have a governing body so myself as a CPA I'm governed by my state board and so Oregon State Board has, has a position, as most states do, that have cannabis in the state, um, that it's okay to, to serve a cannabis client. Um, you want to make sure, as you serve any client, you want to make sure you have a good engagement letter, you um, are doing good work, um, you're complying with all the other laws and rules and regulations around whatever certificate you have. So if you're an enrolled agent, you have another um, set of of requirements this a, a side topic on this is insurance and um people ask me about insurance and yes you can get you know insurance for this industry as well but my, i always maintain your number one insurance policy in any and this really provide this relates to any service for service professional whether you're a plumber electrician accountant doesn't matter do rock solid good work if you do world-class work while well, like we teach in our dope cfo program um do more than expected you kind of under promise and over deliver um, that will serve you better than any insurance policy yes have insurance but first do the good work and keep good records and books that's your number one step secondly if you're jumping into the industry so the aicpa which is the national group of, of cpas and, and really has lots of good standards for really all accountants. They have um, on their website, you can go to that and look at them. Um, they have a page on serving in the marijuana industry. This is changing rapidly, first and foremost. When I started just four or five years ago in Oregon, I couldn't find anybody that was serving cannabis. So I was needing to build charts of accounts and other tools and work papers because they didn't exist. They still don't now. But I would call even small firms. I live in Bend, Oregon, that have four or five accountants, and they would not touch it with a ten-foot pole, um, even though it was legal here in Oregon. And we were there was only three, four states at that time that were even legal at all, and so it was more of a stigma. And if you mentioned you were serving a cannabis client, people might raise their eyebrows. That is going away rapidly. The last three years, and even now, I don't care if you're an accountant or not. And or what state you live in, this it is so in the news right now. Um, cannabis, whether it relates to COVID, and and when COVID, you know, shut down businesses, many businesses were labeled essential that had to be open um, during this crisis, and most states were labeling cannabis essential. So we went from illegal to legal to actually beyond legal. We're essential. People can't live without this because they use it as medicine. So, you know, I, I always use my mother as an example. She's 83 years old. She is beyond anti-cannabis, as you can see. But she has now been prescribed CBD, which is kind of a sister chemical to cannabis. The only difference between CBD and THC, they're both chemicals that are both found in the cannabis plant or the hemp plant. The big difference between C CBD and THC is CBD does not get you high. But that said, so there's many, many people like my mother that are being prescribed CBD now by doctors. They're telling them to go use this for pain or inflammation or whatever. And so the stigma is really quickly going away. And now that we have all these hospitals and doctors and scientists, not just in the U.S., all over the world, researching and actually documenting in real controlled studies the medical benefits of cannabis and CBD and other chemicals, um, it's going to be more and more accepted very, very quickly. Um, so first off, let's look at 
Internal Revenue Code 280E. This basically says if you traffic, which most people think means you own and sell a illegal drug on Schedule 1, um, then you are, you're subject to that. You don't get any tax deductions um, or your clients won't. Now, how did CBD and hemp become legal? Very, very quickly. They just simply got pulled off of Schedule 1 um, by the federal government. And so since they're off Schedule 1, they're now legal. They still have lots of um, complexity to them. So under federal IRS um, accounting, we have code section 471 to look at for um, cannabis accounting. We still got to use that for hemp and CBD, but now for if you're doing a hemp or CBD tax return, you need to also consider 263A, 199A considerations and entity structure and considerations. You got to look at farm accounting. There's lots of complexity. So people ask, they were like, oh, well, what if when, when cannabis comes off 280E, will they need us? Of course they're going to need us because it's even more complex than it is now. Um, and we've seen that with CBD hemp. None of us lost our jobs because CBD and hemp became legal. It just provided way, way more opportunity because now we've got um, this legal in basically all states in the U.S. So many, many more companies are being sprung up in this industry. The, um, what was I going to say around that? Oh, and then on the gap accounting side, so we recommend for all clients, cannabis, CBD, hemp, non-cannabis, whatever, we want to see the books as close to gap and accrual accounting as possible. And this again is my opinion. That adds a ton of value. First of all, you can manage your business better. If you don't do, if you're a farm or a chemical processor and you don't do accrual accounting, gap accounting, how on earth do you run your business? You have no idea how much it costs to produce a gram of oil, a pound of pot, if you don't do cost accounting. So first and foremost, it adds value to just running the business, the management team, the investors, the board of directors. Secondly, if you want to get loans or lending, you're going to need good, good gap books. Um, when you go to do an exit, again, you're going to want a, a good set of gap books. So we feel nationally, doesn't matter what state you're in, let's do it accrual first. Then we'll um, have that be set up perfectly for the um, tax, the federal tax code, IRS, whether you're doing hemp, CBD, or cannabis. And then you'll have to layer in, um, if you're a tax preparer, state tax codes. So um, that's the first first concern people have. Um, there is a ton of complexity. So when you look at the complexity and messiness of cannabis accounting, you can either look at it, I call it kind of the, the glass half full or the um, glass half empty. So if you look at it with the pessimistic glasses on, like, oh, I don't want to get into cannabis. It's got stigmas. It's messy. It's, there's a lot of cleanup. Um, it's hard to get in because there is, there's all these sub-niches of farming, chemical processing, food manufacturer, labs, delivery companies, retail, um, it's complex. It's not simple, cost accounting. But if you look at it from another set of um, glasses, there's tons of opportunity. Um, these clients need us. There's very, very few bookkeepers, accountants, CPAs in the space that actually have the, the knowledge to do it right and then the tools to do it right to go with that knowledge. The charts of accounts, the internal controls work paper, PPC list, engagement letter, month in systems, cost accounting work papers. So the barriers to entry are high. So if you get into this space and particularly if you use our program, you're going to have a competitive advantage. These clients are the average um, client are multi-million dollar um, firms, whether they're startup or not. You can't start a farm or chemical producer or whatever without a lot of capital. And so that means if we can provide real value to them, which we do, we can charge them high fees. Um, let's jump into the evil drug stigma. Uh, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, the the evil drug stigma i got that a lot i'm pretty confident on talking about this now i am part of this baby boomer population that's growing older i have had pain for the last 10 years major lower back pain it's gotten much better but many of us you know my mom has very bad arthritis i'm almost certain i've got i've been told i've got arthritis as well and as i get older and older um 
I'm going to be looking to CBD or THC or whatever um, as an alternative to even Advil, definitely pain pills. I will never go down that route. So right now, you've got these legal drugs, the pain pill crisis, which I think everyone in the U.S. knows about. It's a massive crisis. These pain pills are getting people addicted. They're killing people daily. Um, they don't really solve the problem anyway. They just, they're not a long-term solution. Yeah, you can take a pain pill and, and get rid of your pain for the next few hours, but it's not gonna solve your problem. Um, so we have this huge problem with that. And so the number one medical use, in my opinion, globally for cannabis and CBD and other chemicals in the plant are gonna be around pain and inflammation, things like arthritis, cancer, whatever. People have been actually using these drugs for hundreds if not thousands of years um, around pain we're getting the science to back this up it's non-addictive um, it's a great solution i'm definitely going to be in the older americans um, partaking in this solution um, and so there should be no stigma with this this actually solves a huge national crisis that we have around the pain addiction medicine you know one of um, I know the, the Love Country Store gas station owners, they have over, I think, 3,000 truck drivers on their national staff. And it's a huge problem, truck drivers being addicted to pain pills. And so they came out, we met actually when I was on the farm several years ago, and we're looking, they were very interested in CBD and how the CBD could be used by their truck drivers to get off hooked on pain pills. So there's many industries looking at this. Um, it solves that problem. And this is before you even look at where it's now being used for autism, epilepsy, um, what's the other one? Several other, um, ailments it's being looked at. So that's gonna be a huge piece as we go on and that's gonna re release that stigma. Um, you shouldn't feel any negativity about this industry. I mean, you should be able to be confident and say, look, this industry is not only solving medical problems, real medical problems for real people and the crisis we have there, but then you look at the other side. What about it's recession proof? It's COVID proof. It brings tax dollars to states, cities, counties, the federal government. It's bringing real tax dollars. Um, so it's helping the economy. It's providing jobs. Um, any way you look at it, whatever lens you look at it, this is a good thing for our, our country, in my opinion. Finally, making it as professional, how to put their, yourself out there professionally. So if you're totally concerned you're in Alabama or a state that's not legal, Texas, and you're concerned, we have many people in our program that may have their, their firm called whatever, ABC Accountants, and then maybe they have a different firm where they're marketing cannabis you can have a DBA or even a separate legal entity if you want, and you can market that and you can keep your marketing very, you know, you could set up a firm like say we're dope CFO or whatever. Doesn't have to have a, a person's face or a person's name. You can just be, you know, green accounting services or whatever it is. And you can have a website or a page. Doesn't have to have your personal name and say, hey, we, we serve um, these clients. You can be very professional. Again, number one, first and foremost, get the education, get the tools, get the work papers, and then do world-class work for your, your clients. There's nothing that will beat that. Um, landing new clients, um, how to do that. This industry is exploding. It's going to continue to for the very reasons I've been talking about, whether it's medical or recreation or the economy or um, states needing dollars. It's going to grow rapidly. There's many, I think there's around 50,000 companies right now in the U.S. Um, cannabis, CBD, hemp, I think that number is going to be in the hundreds of thousands. So most of these companies don't even exist right this second. So if you get in now early, VIP means expert, instructor, participant p is huge this is a movement if you can get behind this movement and participate at the local level and the higher level as well um, you're going to meet lots of investors and future um, clients in these groups who are pushing pushing this forward um, so it's a great time to get involved so hopefully i've covered some of that as you can tell i'm not nervous about serving this um, you know, when I first got in five years ago, I, I was worried about telling my mother, but I'm not anymore. We talk about it and it's like, she gets it now that, um, yeah, that it's actually a, a good industry. 
If you have more questions or you want to learn more about our program, our program is a three-part system of education, which is videos, reading, links, court cases, tax codes, all the knowledge, or even around the plant, the operations. Um, it's also how our marketing system, how we find exactly and close cannabis um, clients or CBD hemp, including our offer letter is value-based, how we price it, it's all written out for our members. And then finally, I call a firm in a box. It's every single work paper tool system that I use. And this has grown exponentially over time. And it's now around 100 work papers um, in total how to actually serve these people from start to finish in a world-class way so that you can be, be confident.